Particles modules allow you to connect your IoT project over both Wi-Fi and cellular networks, wherever you are in the world. Let's have a look. When we do this, always remember these key facts, which I always have to read off because I forget them. 20 billion devices in the world today, 25 billion devices in the world tomorrow. And this is the fact that does my head in. 80 zettabytes of data will be traveling around the world at any given time, at any given day. Tell us where Particle plays its role in that ecosystem. Absolutely. So Particle is a leading edge to cloud infrastructure provider. Uh, that means we help engineers build smarter and better IoT products um, in a simpler way than if they were doing so without Particle. Right? Good. So, you know, in a nutshell, what we do is we offer you a streamlined platform that covers hardware modules, connectivity layer. So you're actually um, making the modules themselves? Yes. So they yes. buy the modules, right? So we have cellular modules, we have Wi-Fi modules, we have multi-radio modules, and we even have um, 5G enabled some of the newest product offerings that we have products as well in the realm of these single board computers. And we could right. go into the details um, in, a minute, in a minute, but um, put in simply, we offer pre-certified modules that are all in bundled and ready for engineers to adopt and deploy. We offer a streamlined development development experience. So it's easy to get a start working and writing custom firmware for these products. But right. what's even better is that we abstract away all the different technicalities and complexities of getting data from the edge to the cloud. Right. So if you were thinking about deploying an IoT product, um, covering the challenges of connectivity, different landscapes with certification, towers, different carriers, like there's a lot of different challenges yes. Yes. deploying uh, connected devices. So what we're trying to do is make that as simple as possible, whether you're deploying here in Europe, over cellular or over Wi-Fi, right? right. We're trying to make it like agnostic of the connectivity layer, agnostic of the type of platform that you're building, and let you, in a way, focus on what makes your solution unique. Right, like, so the starting point for this are the selection of boards that you have here. Yes. Right, so you're offering an off-the-shelf solution, whatever whatever that is, to collect, to collect the data, keep the data, and then send the data off wherever it needs to go. Yes. So if I'm a design engineer in our community today, and these didn't exist, what would I? What would be my starting point? I don't have that. What would be my starting point without them? Yeah, that's a great question. So, if you were building this without Particle, you'd have to first design. Hey, which microcontroller should I use? Yep. And there's hundreds of different vendors we're out surrounded here. by. Yes, them. exactly right. And there's just one piece of the solution, right? Then you'd need to think about the connectivity layer. Um, yep. So am I going to connect over Wi-Fi? Am I going to connect over Bluetooth to a smartphone? Am I going to connect over cellular? And depending on that, uh, it branches out into a whole new set of questions, like which modem should I use? Which vendor? Which relationship do I need to manage? If I'm going the cellular path, uh, which with with which carriers do I need to make relationships with? How do I manage and oversee which is a big geographic, big geographic issue, that. Yes, because exactly. You wouldn't know necessarily whether, just because I plug that in the United States, or I plug that in Europe, or I plug that in Africa or Asia, you wouldn't necessarily know that that was compatible exactly. when you're producing your own product, whether or not that There's would work. Totally. Right, so, so, you, so you start from the point of the hardware. Correct. Right. Correct. So, so what is what is it, what's at the heart of your boards? So, uh, in in old-fashioned words, you're a sub-assembly. You've you've taken a board. You've picked out your components. Yes. You put them on a board, so that work doesn't have to be done by the design engineers. That is correct. There are other, there are obviously lots of people that we know that do that that we've interviewed for IP Exchange. So, tell me what is actually on these boards and why you chose them. So it's a mix of different technologies right here. Yep. You're seeing different generations of our products. So starting with uh, what we call Gen 2, or rather Gen 3, then this would be like Gen 4 products, and this would be our, you know, if we could call it Gen 5 generation of products, right? right. So and are they designed to be scalable in the application? Absolutely. Is that is that what's going on there? Absolutely. So this is a mix of two different approaches that you're seeing. So these are what we call the development kits. So they come in the standard feather and form factor, uh, standard or released by Adafruit. So this is compatible with a whole host of set of different carrier boards yep. that allow you to quickly make prototypes. Like you could put this in like a shield that gives you abilities to remotely monitor 
motor controls, connect yep. to PLCs, or yep. do any other sort of application for which there's a standard for the feather form factor. Yeah. You could also get so form factor is key there, isn't it? Yes, at yeah. least at the prototyping stage, right? Yeah. Then we also have what we call the embedded modules themselves. So the embedded modules, you can see if it's an etch card M.2 form factor. So you can actually release or unplug this from the socket. And the advantage that it gives you is that it allows you to have like a single carrier board and then you swap out your module uh, depending on your target region or oh, target connectivity, right? Yep. So, so, so that's at the point that the, uh, the, the that the adaptability comes in. Absolutely. Right. Right. So okay. right now we're so everything else remains the same. Correct. So, same so everything else that you characteristics you, you, pin out exactly. Exactly the same. But you want to deploy in North America, then you use this That's module. That's where it changes. Yeah. You want to deploy right. in okay, the good. rest of the world, you swap yep. it out, right? Yep. Yep. So this one in particular. So for instance, when you take this two, this one's a cellular only module. This is a Wi-Fi only module. This is a multi-radio module. So if your application actually needs both Wi-Fi or cellular, which we typically frame as cellular as your main or preferred path, but just have Wi-Fi as a backup for like places in which um, cellular connectivity is not that great, uh, you can also use our multi-radio platform. And then this is Tachyon, our newestly announced product. This is actually a Linux device. So unlike these other uh, modules, which are more into like the microcontroller space, meant for low-level processing or not too much of demanding processing applications, yep. we've got the Tachyon, which it's actually like this equivalent to saying you've got a smartphone level processing power Yep. in a device form factor yep. that can and what's run. The, and what's the MCU processor that's yeah, sitting so on there? Yeah, so there's a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip. It's a Snapdragon, set. right. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So right. it's 5G. So that's going, I mean, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a big massive, spec, yeah, that's massive a big jump. old spectrum yeah. of... Uh, Quantum of, jump. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Quantum jump. So ideally what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make sure that we have the right tool for the job, right? Absolutely. Instead of offering just a single module and trying to make it fit whatever your application is, we give you a suite of options so that right. you can leverage our ecosystem. And the, what's great about this is that regardless of the module that you're using, you get the single same development experience. So use the, the exact same tool chain to write firmware for your devices, use the exact same web management portal uh, to oversee which first firmware version they're running, Right. you know, if they're online, getting data securely through their devices into the, your end systems, like it's a single pane of glass experience regardless of the module that you're working with. Right. Which right. makes it super easy, super simple to get started, and most importantly, to actually scale. Absolutely. Now, so just talk us through, we, we've got, we got these, from the sublime to the ridiculous, neither is sublime nor, nor ridiculous, silly saying, but there you go. Um, that's my hardware. Yes. Do they do if they come to you and say, "I want to evaluate this because I want ten, th I, you know, I'm going to scale to ten thousand. Yep. How, how do they evaluate this? So we do have a store online, right? Uh, we call the retail store. So typically, engineers can get a sample or two um, and just purchase this off our store. We also have this in trays. So like, if you're doing like a bigger pilot, say you could either purchase one, maybe you could purchase a tray of fifty, right? Yep. But we do have a, a sales department, so if you have like a bigger deployment, then you can talk to sales and we can create a custom. Yeah, um, and you can chop and change these. So, so, so do you buy at source? So if you want that one and you want to say, I'm, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm in Africa or I'm in Asia, do you, do you swap out that chip at that point or do you just have off the shelf and then you play with it? For those type of situations, we do have like the exact same module, so typically customers are able to design a single carrier board and just swap them out. And as they just needed. do it at that point. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Right. So there's your hardware. Talk us through this um, environment platform that you go to. Do so you say one one pane of glass environment? Absolutely. So like Niche. that's a, that's a, once one of the other most challenging pieces of the solution here, right? Because say you've got an application and you've got a hundred devices or 200 devices or yep. a thousand devices, right? Yep. You sold them, you shipped them, now what? Like, yep. you wanna make sure they're online. Yep. Because you wanna make sure that they're sending data correctly. That's what they were built and shipped for, right? Yep. So how do you oversee that? How yep. do you make sure that your do you devices- you use that word observability when you do that? Yes, monitoring, observability, essentially what we bundle as fleet health. Yeah, so I think that we can split this into two separate pieces, right? The pieces that we care about and we expose for you, such as what's the signal strength? What's yes. the signal quality? 
um, are there any pings or drop packages that you should be aware of, indicating that you're deploying at a not ideal place, and maybe you should reevaluate moving your device around, changing its uh, orientation, antenna positioning, stuff like that. Yep. And there's, of course, the metrics that you care about. As a design engineer that's building products, say if you're monitoring um, a generator, you want to make sure that you're able to monitor the variables that make that generator run smoothly, right? So it's two sets of how, how would it collect data about that? I understand the dropout bit. So, I, under, I, I, I understand the, so, so what you're looking for is forensic analysis of what's going on. Is it talking? Yes. So, so I can understand how you can monitor that forensically, but then you, that, but then it can also, it's all, you're suggesting it can also monitor where it is. So how does it do that? Uh, so, well, that's actually another piece. Some of our devices either have an onboard GNSS module, so it's able to do tracking application, right. like this one. Uh, not all of our modules do that, and we also have dedicated modules with like tracking specifically, tracking specific features built in, such as an IMU, accelerometer, yep. um, access to canvas to connect to I engines see. and whatnot. Yes, no, I understand so that, now. that's yep. a more built-in solution. That's yep. probably a hardware piece that I didn't go into too much, which is our gateway space, yep. you know, off the shelf. Instead of having a design engineer having to build out the full solution, like so, which cables, which batteries, which yeah. closure, like you just put this, stick it on a machine. So, so, so to get that forensics, so, yes. so it's clear, is it talking? How efficiently is it talking? Why isn't it talking? How can I make it talk better? That's quite binary. If you're talking about getting other type of analytics that suggest you're using other methods to do that that in some ways are more predictive rather than binary in a sense because you've talked about having modules in there that are looking at data that's around them and then giving that data back to you it's not as binary as the is it working or isn't it working yeah exactly and is that, that true absolutely true and maybe this speaks to one of the other cool things about our platform completely reprogrammable. Yes. So the application layer, so for maybe for a use case, you might want your devices to speak only once per hour because it's a battery powered application. It needs yeah. to be energy efficient. Yeah. There might be others which are powered by the mains or Walward. So those can be spinning information way more faster, way more frequently, looking for more uh, events or alerts or things of interest, right? Right. So all of that is completely user defined. So you're able to actually write your own application firmware that sits on top of the particle foundation that handles um, connectivity and by security and most importantly, right. encryption. And do you do that in a modular way or do they do that with you or do they have to do that alone? No, we can do it however you want to work with. We do have a very good self-service documentation website. So engineers can, it's just as easy as grabbing a sample from our retail store, going to our documentation into the getting started section, and they'll walk you through setting up your devices, adding them to your account, starting developing with some pre-made extras, um, templates you know, and uh, hardware examples. If you need help, there is a thriving community that you can reach out to for help. And oh. there's, yeah, yeah, we've got a community forums. Right. Uh, yeah, there's a very active and engaged particle community who's always there to help and provide examples, experience. Hey, I've got an issue with. And where do they go to get that? On the on the particle.com site or Absolutely. somewhere else? Absolutely, right. So it's all in their particle. So you could go into community.particle.io for the forum. Right. Particle.io for general information. Docs.particle.io for our extensive documentation resource hub and um, store the particle.io uh, to actually get started with this uh, modules. From very simple communication to a stat and sitting on that, doing something very, very complicated, fully scalable, interchangeable for, ge for geographies. For the most and, part, yes. And the type of networks. And then once it's in the field, you then offer a platform that will enable you to look at it, understand how is it talking, how efficiently is it talking, why isn't it talking, and by the way, you can then add in some sensors that can give you some sort of predictive idea about how efficient it is in the place that you've put it. Correct. And then, if you don't have the answers to that, you can then go to particle.io forums yes. and chat with other people who are trying to solve the same kind of problems to work it out. Absolutely.